Yeah, so I just want to share with you guys today about um, this season, even very recently, what some things that I've been walking through with Jesus with deep discouragement um, in pioneering seasons. Um, we've pioneered in some different places, my husband Herbert and I, and in this last season, God has sent us to Japan, um, which is less than 1% Christian. Um, and um, yeah, so in, in Japan, we've had the joy of getting to walk towards Jesus with a lot of um, different kinds of people. I specifically have had lots of moms um, around me because of being a mom, um, and I've had the joy in the last season of getting to walk through um, life and walk towards Jesus with um, several different women that just begin to really encounter Jesus and um, get miraculously healed um, from back problems and um, and really receive him as Lord and Savior and really even having encounters with Jesus um, and and pray to profess him as their Savior, which is like just the best thing. That's what we're there for. Um, and then um, I was I've had two different experiences. Um, within the course of a few months where suddenly I sat down to a conversation where I thought I was going to be planning a baptism celebration or just a time of discipleship with a dear friend um, and just like a total 180 and um, that person or those people sharing like, yep, I've decided I'm going back to Buddhism. This is this Christianity thing for me is not for me and just walking away and just saying, I'm sorry, but no, Jesus is not who I want to love. And for me, that was, it just broke my heart um, more than I even wanted it to. <laughs> it devastated me to see someone that I knew had had tasted and seen Jesus and how beautiful he is and that they walked away. And of course, we know this is not the last chapter. The story is being written, but it hit me really hard. And so um, in that season, um, I just felt so desperate and so needy. I, I always want to be hungry. I want to I want to encourage us that no matter if things are going beautifully or if we're we don't even know like what the next step for vision looks like, hunger and desperation is always going to be the greatest gift and the, one of the greatest things that we can pursue for Jesus. And so in that season, I just started hearing this phrase. I think the Spirit was just speaking to me. He said, wash, clothe, and, and eat. Um, and so I would just wake up every morning in the season where I was just just so heartbroken watching someone walk away from, from Jesus that was a dear friend of mine and I felt was becoming a dear friend of Jesus. Um, and I just felt him, I just felt so like vulnerable and exposed to the, the slime of the darkness of the enemy and that hopeless Jesus. Would you wash me in your blood and wash away the slime of the lies of the enemy? Jesus, would you clothe me in your, in your word? Would you clothe me in your righteousness? And um, would you feed me your bread? Would you... Would you fill me with your living water? And so it just became like a, uh, has become just a daily um, washing of the blood, clothing and eating, um, and in the season of, of facing those, those discouragements and knowing there's something so beautiful coming. Um, and in the midst of even those things, there's just been incredibly beautiful things. Um, in, in pioneering, um, we become a baby again. <laughs> I always said this in pioneering, you have to relearn how to talk, you have to learn, relearn how to engage with people. Um, you truly become a baby. So I do need to be washed, I do need to be clothed, I do need to learn how to eat all over again by him and, and in this new new land. Um, and so um, he's he's been doing that for all of us and just learning that. and. Um, yeah, there's, um, in the, in the midst of facing discouragement, we're also seeing beautiful things happen. Um, I have a really good friend that, um, loves Jesus, is super in love with Jesus, and she, 
um, has a story that many Japanese people have had. Um, where there's suicide in the family. So when she was five years old, four or five years old, um, one moment she was home alone with her dad playing um, with him, and the next minute she went to find him because um, he had disappeared, and she um, walked in on her father having committed suicide. Um, and the devastation, the loneliness, the rejection that you have to walk through as a child um, having yeah, just years of her childhood being alone because then her mom had to work and um, provide for their family. Um, and and now today, we got to meet her when she was still in her teens. Today, she's encountered Jesus. She was baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, entering bars, preaching the gospel, becoming a leader, worshiping, leading worship, and just so in love with Jesus. Coming from that place of desperation, knowing I'm desperate, I'm needy. Um, and, and so I just want to encourage us as we are pioneering, as we're pressing into loving on Jesus and loving on the lost, even in hopeless situations, that um, we need to stay desperate and needy. As we're surrounded by hopelessness, as we're surrounded by brokenness, we have to be the first ones to say, I'm desperate, I'm needy, I need you, Jesus, and let him come in all the time. And that takes time. So I just encourage us to take the time. Some days we might have five minutes, some days we might have five hours, but if we need to make five hours so that we can be filled and to give, um, to be able to pour out, we need to take the time to do that. So um, yeah, stay desperate, stay, stay needy. <laughs>